Okay, uh, good morning everyone. Um, I'm Professor David Hudder. I'm the head of the English department here at the Chinese University. Uh, I'm very quickly going to uh, give a little introduction. Um, thank you for coming. Uh, we have a number of events, mini lectures that you will see scheduled for later in the day. There's one at 11.30, I think. So please do come to those. Uh, in a minute, I'll hand over to my colleague, Joanna Mansbridge, who will talk you through the, uh, the details of uh, what it is we do. But I'll just say a few things uh, to introduce the overall picture. The English department, you know, you might think it's all about native speakers, British English, American English. It might be about improving your English, all of the things that it looks like. Studying English in school for DSE, among other things, is leading towards, and it's true, studying here will help polish, as we often say, polish your English. But I don't think it's as simple as becoming a better user of English in the kind of traditional way. You're certainly not going to sound like me, and you shouldn't want to sound like me. Um, we have two sides of the department. One is linguistics, one is literature. Uh, it's not quite as narrow as it sounds. Literature, you might be studying poetry for sure. You might be studying movies. You might be writing your own fiction or poetry. So lots of creativity on that side. And in linguistics, yeah, you might be studying um, language policy. You might be thinking about, well, why exactly does the Hong Kong government have things set up as it does? Why does DSE work like it does? You may think that often at the moment. But anyway... We also have lots of other things that we do. We think about English as English is, global English is, English all around the world. Um, you, I say, shouldn't want to sound like me. You may think you have a Hong Kong accent. You may think you want to get rid of it. But increasingly, uh, we would say that's not the right kind of attitude. And of course, many native speakers have accents they don't like and like to get rid of. So that's not really, perhaps, the way to think and feel about English. So we study in linguistics um, some of the kind of social attitudes that condition language use. How do people think and feel about English? Uh, maybe how does English in a place like Hong Kong relate to the other languages, in principle Chinese, of course. Uh, we also, in linguistics, have massive study of huge amounts of language, big data. So you get the chance, in some cases, to interview real people. In other cases, you're just looking at the outcome of the data. So English, I think, then, is in lots of different ways coming at some major kinds of issues in education now, trying perhaps to address a future where maybe you're a bit worried, is AI going to take all our jobs? Well, I think this program gives you lots of different skills, and they're all about making English your own language. It's not just something you study. It's not just something that's other people's language, and it's not just something that maybe a computer could do better than you. Not at all. That's not how uh, the program operates, and I believe that's really the, the truth of the future. Um, AI, of course, the most familiar kinds, generative AI, chat GPT, are uh, based on large language models. You'll have come across that many times, LLMs. But that will tell you a little bit about the place of being a student of language, I think. Uh, there will be people in the engineering department on this campus who are doing a lot of that work in AI, but there will be people across all the other bits of this university who are studying and thinking and becoming better users of AI. So the English program also will give you a feel for that. Uh, in particular, we're developing courses in creativity and AI. So there are lots of different ways that our program introduces this sense of having English as your own language, having an emotional connection with it, being able to use it well, that's for sure. HSBC may want to employ you in their graduate recruitment program because your English is excellent. That's fine but it's also about you feeling like it's something that you own. It's not my language, it's increasingly everyone's language. It's often said, I'll leave you with this thought, that most of the English spoken or used worldwide, there are no native speakers present. Nobody like me, I'm British. Nobody's there, it is 
nobody's there who's a native speaker who feels that it's their language. Everybody's using it to talk to one another. That's the truth of the matter, and that's why in Hong Kong it's such an important thing that we keep studying English alongside the other languages. Right, I have spoken too long already. We have a short time, and I want to hand over right now to my colleague Joanna Mansbridge, who's the admissions coordinator. She will give you a lot more detail. Thanks very much for coming. Thank you. Thank you so much, David. Um, oh, great. Here we go. Okay, so um, as David said, my name is Joanna Mansbridge, um, and it's my pleasure today to introduce um, some of the distinctive features of our program here at CUHK. So I'll begin with the question that might be on some of your minds. So why study English? Um, you might have already decided that. So the other question is why study English at CUHK? So you do have choice, obviously. Um, so I, I just want to highlight some of the distinctiveness of our program so that you can make that choice in an informed way. Uh, so I'll, I'll just begin with um, our website. This is our mission. Um, so uh, I should say that our department was ranked 51st last year in the QS World Ranking, so um, we do very well in that. Our faculty are very international. They come from all parts of Asia as well as different parts of the Anglophone world. And we're all very dedicated teachers as well as researchers, so we're very approachable um, and there's a very uh, collegial environment in our department. Um, and the students themselves have a very kind of close-knit community. So we emphasize choice in both research and student life. Um, and so students have quite a bit of flexibility to choose their academic path, the kinds of courses, the kinds of focuses that they foci, um, that they um, develop in our department. Uh, so as David said, our main areas are applied English linguistics and English literary studies. We also have two other I guess we could say sub areas. Um, so we have a series of three communications courses, uh, three um, mandate or required communications courses. And these are really invaluable for students. They teach academic writing skills as well as um, different writing across different genres. Um, and it goes all the way to preparing for interviews, writing cover letters, writing CVs. So they're really valuable courses for students. And then we have um, the kind of heart of our program, which is applied English linguistics and literature. Um, so there is one required course for each of those areas. Um, and then after that, students can choose the electives based on their interests. So you might have a really keen interest in literature, and so you can just take as many literature courses as you, you can. Um, or linguistics might be your interest. Um, or you might want a really broad um, overview of English. So you might want to look at it from both perspectives e equally, and you can do that. We also have um, a series of creative writing courses uh, and students can declare creative writing as a stream. And so if they do do that, then it does appear on their transcripts. So we have that, um, that's new as of 2022-23. Um, but if you're not declaring it as a stream, you're still welcome to take um, some of the creative writing courses. Okay, so. So we have a, um, we see this as a very broad-based approach to studying English. Um, as David said, it's not a proficiency program. We really look at English as a kind of social, cultural, historical entity. It's continually evolving depending on where it moves, where it circulates, where it's used. Um, and so you're, you're learning not just the language, but you're learning about the cultures that use it, um, including Hong Kong. So you, um, by learning uh, about English from different perspectives, you're gonna um, find your voice in the language and hopefully find a, a sense of home in the language. So also, as David said, it's, English is nobody's language, it's everybody's. Um, and it, um, it becomes um, something new um, for each individual speaker, but also the cultures that speak it. So you're des uh, designated an English major right from the first day and you start taking English courses, obviously, but you also participate in, in student activities. So we have a very lively student um, society, English society, um, and you can become involved in that and that's a great way to create uh, bonds amongst your peers um, and get to know and, and be involved in extracurricular activities. So um, this leads to a greater knowledge, uh, but also a greater sense of belonging in the department. So as I said, it's a very collegial department, um, and the students really foster a sense of belonging amongst themselves, which I think is really um, wonderful. And, yeah. So 
so these are some of the skills. These are very broad skills, um, broadly put. Um, but you're going to learn to be an independent and confident communicator. Uh, develop cultural literacy or an understanding of how language, how English varies across different cultures and historical periods. You'll gain an understanding of and an, and an open-mindedness to different perspectives. So again, this, this comes from this sort of uh, multicultural approach to English. And you'll acquire skills that are very transferable to a, the global workplace. So obviously, English is the global language, um, and it's an incredibly uh, transferable skill to many different professions. And I'll get to that at the very end. So our courses uh, encourage independent thinking, and we cultivate creative and critical skills. So we're not an exam. We, not many of our courses have exams. Um, some do. Um, we have assessments that um, really stretch students' critical and creative skills, thinking skills and writing skills. So we do have essays. Most courses have essays. We also have multimedia presentations. We have reflective narratives um, or reflective essays. Uh, creative writing, um, not just in the creative writing course, but some of our other courses incorporate creative writing. Dramatic performances. Um, and then every student in their final year will do a ca final capstone project. Um, and so you'll work with a faculty advisor and you'll choose your own research topic or creative writing topic. Um, many of our students do creative writing capstones. Um, and so this really represents the kind of culmination of your experience at CUHK. And it, it um, allows you to take something that was of interest to you, but you didn't really get to think through in the way you wanted, and to develop it into something more substantial. For those who are interested in going on to postgraduate, um, do postgraduate studies, this becomes a really important piece of writing that you can send with your application as a writing sample. So it serves that purpose as well. So I'm just going to introduce a few of our courses. So as I said, we have a creative writing course, very um, introductory creative writing course, uh, teaches you the craft of writing across various genres. We also have more specialized courses in poetry, short story, um, writing for the screen, writing for the stage. Uh, so as I said, students can really focus in on that and declare it as a stream if they wish. Um, creative writing is, is a very valuable skill, not just it doesn't mean that you're going to become a, a writer necessarily. Um, but David mentioned the importance of AI literacy, and I think the more companies and organizations use generative AI to craft their messages, um, the more they're going to value a human voice that will give those messages a kind of distinctive edge, so that they're not just flat and generic. Um, so all of the all of the companies sounding exactly the same. So another popular course are 19th century novels on screen. Um, so a you'll read 19th century novels and you'll also watch their film adaptations. So you'll consider differences between print and moving image, um, but you'll also discuss questions around nationhood, gender, class, um, and how those remain relevant in the 21st century. So obviously they, they do in some sense because we keep watching these, these films. Drama and performance. Um, so this is a course I get to teach, which I uh, really enjoy. So there's two iterations of this course, and uh, students um, learn about the major styles of drama, Western drama mostly, and they um, write and perform their own play at the end of the semester. They also write an essay um, reflecting on that experience, uh, but the primary object of this, of, of this um, course is to perform uh, a production in a theater. Um, so this is a linguistics course that's really fascinating and um, also popular, forensic linguistics. Um, so in this course, students study actual legal cases um, where forensic linguists are involved in legal cases, so where language is, is part of the evidence. Um, and so they apply the, the methods that forensic linguists use to study this legal evidence. Um, and so they develop, it in a, develop these skills in a kind of hands-on way. So it's a really interesting course. And uh, I guess we could say this is the literary equivalent. We have a course in crime fiction. Um, and this course looks at crime fiction from its origins in the 19th century all the way to film and television in the 21st century. Um, so topics include the, the criminal mind, epistemology of clues. Um, and students also learn how to read like a detective. So you're, you're reading for clues and uh, learning to formulate your own interpretations based on those clues. This also includes a creative writing component where students have, it, the course ends with a workshop uh, where students 
um, practice writing their own detective stories. So kind of uh, applied learning. This course um, is obviously of relevance and importance, language in the internet. Um, so how is the internet changing the English language? Um, how is it changing how we communicate? Um, is it bad for English? Is it bad for language? Um, what is the status of English online in an increasingly multilingual internet? Um, so this really poses questions, again, relevant to what we're thinking through with um, the, you know, the, the kind of ubiquity of AI and um, the need to develop literacy around how to use those tools. Uh, so this is a, a course that looks at Hong Kong English. So we don't think of English in the, in the singular, we think of it as uh, Englishes. So we could say this is the local version and then we have a, a global version called World Englishes and Their Cultures. Um, but Hong Kong English looks at the dis distinctiveness of English in Hong Kong. So how it developed from when Hong Kong was a colonial, um, was a colony to the present. Um, so it's a really interesting course that you can draw from your own experience and um, extend to your own. Um, language and intercultural communication. So this is important for really all students um, because it's really learning how to um, communicate across cultures. So English is spoken around the world, as David said, spoken more frequently in, in cultures with non-native speakers. So we look, this course looks at um, the concept of culture um, and how cultural differences in terms of codes of conduct, nonverbal communication, how that becomes embedded in English language use. And so you learn how to be sensitive to that and to appreciate that and to um, adeptly communicate across cultures. So this becomes really valuable in um, global working environments. So if you're working in banking or finance or um, any kind of corporation with people from different cultures, um, you really become adept at sort of um, appreciating and learning to communicate across those differences. Okay, so I'll just talk a little bit about two maybe um, extra, um, not part of our curriculum, but they're not quite extracurricular. This is a credit-bearing course, we're World English, Oxford Summer Program. So we have a student sharing um, at the end of my talk, Ariel, and she'll talk more about this, so I won't say much, but it's a very popular uh, program. You do have to apply, students have to apply, um, uh, but you go for six weeks, is it six weeks, Ariel? Two weeks, sorry, <laughs> two weeks. You go to two weeks and you study at Oxford University with, with Oxford tutors. Um, and then you're also able to take in all sorts of cultural learning, so you can travel around the UK, Many students take the opportunity while they're in that part of the world to travel around Europe and apply their uh, English skills in a very global context. So it's a very transformative experience and um, like I said, a very popular one. So another popular extracurricular is the Andrew Parkin Drama Cup. Uh, so this is an experience that students often really take away as something that's really memorable. Um, so it's uh, a very friendly competition um, and we usually have about four groups of students and they write and stage their own plays. So they're directors, they're writers, they're lighting designers, sound designers, costume designers. So they stage their own play and then a panel of faculty judges um, chooses different winners for prizes, cash prizes. Um, and it's a very, it's a really uh, wonderful event that occurs at the end of the academic year. So it's a, a wonderful way to wrap up the academic year and um, in a really kind of uh, celebratory way. Okay, so the last thing I, I just want to mention is job prospects. So that might be on some of your minds already. And uh, behind the question of why you want to study English might be this question of what job do I want? What career do I want to pursue? So English opens up multiple career pathways. It's a very flexible degree, especially in Hong Kong. Um, so unlike engineering or medicine, where you go to be an engineer or a doctor, with an English degree, many different options open up to you. So this is the, these are the statistics for our students last year. Um, and it's kind of stable, um, just in terms of the last three years. So historically, what's remained um, very stable is about a third of our students tend to go into education. So the English education minor, very popular choice among students. Um, so they go into various teaching professions. And then we have further studies. So many of our students go on to do postgraduate studies. 
I think that attests to the rigor of our program, but also to the fact that our students get um, inspired in some way by something that they've learned and they want to pursue it further. And then we have another third um, that is commerce and industry. So this is really where the flexibility of our program um, shines. So in this category, we have things like public relations, publishing and editing, um, corporations, so IT corporations, banking. Um, we also have the art and design industry. Um, and so anything where writing is, it is involved or communication is involved, which is any industry really, um, students can pursue opportunities in that direction. Um, I, I'm sorry, I can't really say anything about the other, which is quite a portion. Um, I'm not sure. It's the, this is data that, that isn't captured by the list of professions um, on the questionnaire. So it's, it, it's interesting to me, actually, to, to wonder what that other is. Um, it could be entrepreneurial, um, sort of startup type, not startup, but entrepreneurial uh, ventures. Um, but yeah, I can't uh, say exactly what the other is. So the, the last thing I just want to mention is that our department, um, as well as the Faculty of Arts uh, and the university, um, have many scholarships available that students can apply to. And many of our students have been successful in, in gaining those scholarships. So that's something that isn't really, we don't advertise it very um, explicitly on our department, but it's, um, those are available and really worth pursuing. Uh, so that is all that I have to say about our program. Um, do we have time for questions? No, we don't. Okay. <laughs> so we will, if anybody has any questions, I'll be here. David will be here. Ariel will be here so we can discuss after.